So this video is um, on our homework number one, which is for chapter 12, which is the solving tree equations worksheet. I added these unit circles just to save myself time drawing these when I'm trying to explain this uh, to you guys. Sorry, I didn't put them on yours. Um, so on this, um, we're going to factor this. And if you need to do a box to diamond, we can do a box to diamond. Some of us might be able to factor it without that, but I will do it with the, the box. And actually, yeah, I'm going to start again, give myself a little more space. Okay, and then I'm going to put it into a diamond. So my two sine squared X is going to go here. My negative three is going to go here. When I multiply those together, I'm going to get a negative six sine squared X. And it has to add to this negative sine X. So that needs to be a negative sine X. So that is going to be a negative three sine X and a two sine X. So a negative three sine X and a two sine X. And then I'm gonna figure out the outside. So this is going to be a two sine X and a sine X uh, times by a negative three up here times by a one here. So my factors are going to be two sine X minus three and sine X plus one equal zero. Okay, we have to make sure it's equal to zero and it was, I should have stated that originally, okay. Um, so for this one, I would get two sine X equals three. I divide by two, I get sine X equals three halves. Now the maximum for sine and for cosine is a one. Three halves is more than one. So this is not gonna lead to an answer. Okay, that's gonna give you error if you put it into your graphing calculator. Um, and then the other one is going to be sine X equals a negative one. And so I need to figure out where my sine, which is my Y coordinate is going to be a negative one. And I need to pay attention to the fact that we are doing this for all X. Okay, so that means I'm going to go around and around and around in a circle both directions. So down here, this point would have been zero comma negative one. So that's where my sign is gonna be a negative one. And so that's gonna be a three pi halves. So my answer is gonna be X equals three pi halves plus or minus two pi n. So I can go two pi this direction around and around and around, or I can go two pi this direction around and around and around. And that's gonna give us all of our answers. So this is our final answer. Okay, on number two. So on two, um, for this one, I have uh, two cosine squared X equals one. And this time we're going from zero to two pi, including zero and including two pi. Okay, so I am going to divide by two. I am going to square root both sides. Now, when I square root one half, I'm gonna get a positive and negative, and I'm gonna take the square of the top, which is one, and the square of the bottom, which is a root two. But we don't like it like that, so we are going to rationalize it. I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by root two. And now we see that we get a positive and a negative root two over two. So that is gonna be at my pi force, okay? We're looking for our cosine, which is our X, but at our pi force, your X and your Y are actually the same coordinates, but maybe their signs um, are different. So we're gonna be here at pi force. We're gonna be here at three pi force. We're going to be here at five pi force, 
and we're going to be here at seven pi fourths. Now, since they want from zero to two pi, these are going to be my four answers. Pi fourths, three pi fourths, five pi fourths, and seven pi fourths. If they had wanted us to go forever and ever and ever around, what I would have noticed is that these are directly across, which means they're pi away. So I could have gotten five pi fourths in every combination around by adding or subtracting pi n. And I could have done the same this direction because those are pi away from each other. And so I could add pi n to this and that's gonna take me around and around and around. That's if they had wanted all of them. They did not, so you can just list it straight like this. On um, number three, this one we're going from zero to two pi, just like we did the last one. Okay, so this is dealing with cosecant. Um, this one is really, uh, there's no lead in front. So I can think of this as just a, a plain old diamond, okay? What multiplies to negative two and adds to negative one? This is where my negative one is right there, okay? I have negative one cosecant. And so that is gonna be a negative two and a positive one. So that means I'm gonna have a cosecant X minus two and a cosecant X plus one equals zero. And again, Got to make sure it equals zero if I'm going to be factoring. Um, if not, I have to make it equal zero. So that means my cosecant, oh, not my C, my cosecant X is equal to two, and my cosecant um, X is equal to negative one. So remember, cosecant, it's reciprocal. Remember, C doesn't go with C. So the reciprocal of this is going to be sine. And so the reciprocal of two is one over two. So I'm trying to figure out where my cosecant is two, but that's the same as where my sine is one half. And for this, again, if I flip this, do the reciprocal, it's still gonna be a negative one. So these are two spots I'm looking for. So for this one here, my sine being one half, again, that's my y. That's short. I want my y to be short. So I'm going to go long comma short. I'm going to be right here. Okay, and that's going to be pi six. And my sine is positive in two quadrants. Okay, my sine is positive in um, quadrant one. And my sign is positive in quadrant two. So these are the two quadrants I'm looking for. And so if I have a pi six, that means I also have a five pi six. Now for the other one, this one here, I want where my sign is a negative one. We found that earlier. That's gonna be down here at um, three pi halves. So my answers to this are going to be x equal pi six, five pi six, and three pi halves. Again, because we're going from zero to two pi. Okay, on number four. So on four, um, sine squared x minus one equals zero. So I'm going to take sine squared x minus one equals zero. And this is for all, so I have to pay attention to that, okay? So it's for all. Um, so I'm going to add one to both sides. So I'm going to get sine squared x is equal to one. I'm going to take the square root. So sine x is going to equal a positive and a negative one. So again, sine is my y. So I want my y to be a positive one and a negative one. So it's gonna be a positive one up here at pi halves. It's gonna be a negative one down here at three pi halves. Now, I want for all. So normally I would have to add and subtract two pi n. And what that would do is it would go all the way around in the positive direction and 
all the way around in the negative direction back to the same spot. And I would do the same down here, plus or minus two pi n. And again, I would go in the positive direction all the way around to here and in the negative direction all the way around to here. However, since you notice that these are directly across from each other, they are pi away from each other. So if I add and subtract pi n, if I go a positive pi n, I go here. If I go a negative pi n, I end here. So, and, and same from the other one. So I'm gonna keep going around and around and around. So this is gonna get all of my options for me. So my answer is gonna be x equal pi halves plus or minus pi n. And that's your answer. On number five, okay, three cotangent x minus one, and this is for all, okay? So three cotangent squared x minus one equals zero. I am going to add one. I am going to divide by three. I'm gonna take the square root. So the cotangent um, of x is going to be plus or minus when I take the square root. Square root of one is one, and the square root of three is root three. Don't like that. Um, I'm gonna rationalize it. However, um, before I do that, I'm not great at my cotangents. I prefer to do the reciprocal. So I'm gonna think of it as a tangent. And so I'm gonna take the reciprocal of this, which is plus or minus root three. And so I wanna know where my tangent is plus or minus root three. And you need to remember that tangent, tangent is of an angle, theta, is y over x. So since I have this root three here, I know I'm gonna need either root three halves comma one half or one half comma root three halves. So this one is root three halves comma one half. This one is one half comma root three halves because this one would be long, short, and the other one would be short, long, okay? But I want my y, I'm thinking to be the root three halves, root three over, yeah, root three halves, okay? Because if my root three halves is on top, I'm just gonna show you why. Your root three halves is on top and your one half is on bottom. You need to divide by a one half, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And so I end up with a root three. If my root three halves was on bottom, I would have had to rationalize and that would have given me a root three over three, which is the other point. Okay, so let me get rid of this. So again, we want, sorry, I erased too much. Okay, so we want um, that point that I have here. Now I want positive and negative. So my positives here, I'll do in orange. And this is, oops, said I'm doing an orange and I'm not. This is pi thirds. So that's gonna be also positive down here. And that is gonna be four pi thirds. Then let me do, um, hot pink for the negative ones. So it's gonna be negative here at two pi thirds, and it's gonna be negative here at five pi thirds. Now you'll notice that these ones here are pi away from each other, and these ones here are pi away from each other. 
So instead of having to go plus or minus two pi n for each of these four, I'm gonna do my orange ones, okay? Plus or minus pi n, and then my pink one, plus or minus pi n. So my answers are going to be x is equal to, and I'm gonna start with this one, pi thirds plus or minus pi n, that's one answer. That's gonna get me that answer and four pi thirds and back and forth and around and around over and over again. So the other one is going to be the two pi thirds, again, plus or minus pi n. Okay, this one here, and then plus or minus pi n will get me this one down here. Okay, and that is our answers. On number six, this one is from zero to two pi. And for this one, it's equal to zero. I noticed that there's a sine x in both of them. So let me just write the problem first. I'm gonna factor out a sine x and I'm gonna get one minus two cosine x equals zero. So here, sine x equals zero. And here, when I set that equal to zero and solve, I'm gonna get negative cosine x equals negative one. I am going to get cosine x equals one over two. So I'm looking for where my sine is zero and also where my cosine is um, a one half. So my sine is zero. Remember, sine is your y. So my sine is zero here at zero. It's zero here at pi. And it's zero again, going all the way around at two pi, okay? So this right here is gonna be zero pi two pi. My other one, this one here, I want my cosine to be one half, that's your X. I want my X to be one half, which means I want it to be short. So that's gonna be short comma long, that's gonna put me here, and that's gonna be at pi thirds. And cosine is your X, so it's positive in quadrant one, but it's also positive down here in quadrant four, which would be five pi thirds. So I'm gonna add on a pi thirds and a five pi thirds. And this is going to be my answers. And that's the last one. So hopefully you find this helpful. Again, use this to help yourself, not to just copy down the answers, okay? I want you to try them, then refer to this if you need help.